In the verification step, we check if we have solved the mathematical model correctly. And so here are the checks that we can do. First, we check that the solution agrees with the mathematical model. Uh, so if we look at the boundary conditions as well as the physics in the mathematical model. So first, let's check if the boundary conditions on displacement and traction are satisfied. So if I go to my ANSYS model, we already checked that the, um, the displacements at the uh, three holes are zero. So that matches the displacement boundary condition. Now this is a free surface, and so we expect the normal as well as the tangential traction on that surface to be zero. Now, somewhere in the middle of the crank, the normal traction is aligned with the y direction. So over there, we expect sigma y to be zero or very small. So let's check that. So let me add uh, an object for calculating uh, sigma y. So I'll just say duplicate without results. And I will rename it as sigma y. And so I want the stress along the y direction. And I will say evaluate all results. So it'll do the post-processing and get sigma y. And let me look along z. And let me go over here and use probe. And you can see that you know, somewhere in the middle, it's very small. And as I move away, it still stays small, but it, it, it increases because now, you know, the normal traction direction is not aligned with Y. So that seems to, that spot check seems to work out. We can also, so if I just go to the isometric view and go to where the force is applied. So on this surface highlighted in red, we are applying a traction that's equal to the force value divided by the surface area of that hole. So the, the, the stresses at that hole should match that applied traction. So let's check that. So let me look along minus z, and let me go in here. And over here, the traction, the normal, tra the, the normal traction is basically that force divided by the area of that surface and that should match sigma y. So let's see what the sigma y value is. So probe and this is around 540 psi and here it's around um, 540. Okay minus so here it's tensile, here it's compressive, which is what we expect because here the force is, the traction is like this, here the traction is like that. So that should be equal to the force divided by the surface area. The force we know is uh, 100 pound force. Let's get the surface area. So if I go back to the isometric view and go to geometry and and select that surface. So I click that and click that. And here it tells me the surface area. So if I double click on that, it tells me that the surface area is little below 0.2. So then the traction there is uh, 100 divided by 0.2, around 0.2, around 500 psi, which is what we got. So that spot check also seems to work. Okay, so the boundary conditions seem, the spot checks on the boundary conditions seem fine. Um, the next we check if, if the physics in the mathematical model is, uh, is satisfied and the physics is equilibrium. So which means that we have to check if reactions balance the applied load. So let's do that. Now the reactions are going to be where we are constraining the model. So we can get the total reaction by I'm going to solution saying probe force reaction and 
and fix support. So that's going to add the reactions at all the nodes that comprise those surfaces and it will give us the, the, the total. And then I will say right click and say evaluate all results. So it did that post processing and we can see that in the X and Z directions it adds to very low values so that's essentially zero and in the Y direction it's minus thousand pound or minus hundred pound force which balances the applied load. So it looks like that check is also fine. Next we check that numerical error is acceptable. That is the numerical solution strategy um, has you know introduced an error that is acceptable and one way to do that is the, the major error is a discretization error so we can check if the results are independent of the mesh. So one could just go in and change the, the sizing over here uh, change that to point 0.1 and change that to point 0.05 maybe and then you know check how the, the stresses uh, change particularly um, so one could check you know how the stress along that line changes on as the mesh is refined and then the last aspect of verification is to check the comparison with the prior hand calculations for bending stress and maximum displacement. And here is a summary. Um, so the, the bending stress at A is within about 10% uh, of the hand calculation. And the maximum displacement is from ANSYS is in the range predicted from the hand calculation. So that check also seems good.